Hey there! Hello and welcome to the technical section of Biopandit. I am delighted to introduce myself as sort of your very own Mahapandit. Today, I am going to discuss about local and global alignment of protein or nucleotide sequences. In our video on dot matrix plot, the link of which is provided in the video description, we showed that dot plot can be used to detect sequence similarity. But dot plot has a serious limitation. It does not resolve similarity that is interrupted by regions that do not match very well or that are present in only one of the sequences. Therefore, we need to devise a method that considers these limitations and still provides an optimal alignment between two sequences. Such an alignment can be represented by writing the sequences on successive lines along the page. After writing this, we start matching characters. If two characters match, we, we place them in the same column. If they do not match, we can place them in the same column as mismatches or we can also place them next to a gap. So, the first thing you need to understand is an alignment column. An alignment column basically represents a match between two sequences of interest. Now, what is a gap? A gap is an arbitrary null character that is represented by a dash. During an alignment, a gap may be placed into either of the sequences. It basically represents one or more amino acid or nucleotide residues that is present in only one of the two sequences. This can happen due to evolutionary insertion and deletions. In other words, an alignment allows us to infer an evolutionary insertion or deletion in the form of a gap but it cannot tell us the exact molecular basis. In an alignment column, if two characters match perfectly, it is called a sequence identity. Such an alignment column represents a conserved site of a protein or a gene. If two characters do not match identically, but their chemical properties match, that is called a similarity. For example, here we consider a sequence similarity if there are two purines or two pyrimidines in the same column. Now think of this. You have two protein sequences or nucleotide sequences of 300 length. You want to align. If you consider all possible matches, insertions and deletions, to find the optimal alignment, you must perform 10 to the power 88 comparisons. Yes guys, 10 to the power 88 comparisons. Even with powerful computers, this task is quite time consuming. So what is the solution? Needleman and Unsha in 1970 proposed that the solution is to break the problem down into a progressive building of an alignment by comparing two residues at a time. They started at the end of each sequence, then moved ahead one amino acid pair at a time allowing for various combinations of matched pairs, mismatched pairs or extra amino acids in one sequence. In computer science, this approach is called dynamic programming. Needleman and Unsho algorithm therefore includes two parts. First, it generates all possible alignments of the two sequences. Each alignment includes a unique combination of match, mismatch, single insertion and deletions. The second step is to use a scoring system to score these trial alignments to find the best one. Every match in a trial alignment is given a score of 1, every mismatch is given a score of 0 and individual gaps add a penalty score. These numbers are then added across the alignment to obtain a total score. The alignment with the highest possible score is defined as the optimal alignment. So at the end, we globally align the two sequences. Remember guys that Needleman and Unsho algorithm aligns two sequences end to end and this is why it is called a global alignment. Smith and Waterman recognized that the most biologically significant regions in DNA and protein sequences were sub-regions that align very well. And these sequences also include some other biologically less significant regions that do not align very well. 
I am showing you a simple problem here. See the global alignment first. Now see the local alignment. Only by performing a local alignment, you can see that majority of the similarity between the two sequences is included in the first 15 nucleotides. Local alignments are usually more meaningful than global alignments because they include patterns that are conserved in the sequence. They can also be used instead of the needleman Unshu algorithm to make two sequences that may have a small matched region or when the or when they are of different lengths, or when they are overlapping, or when one sequence is a subsequence of the other. So, how to do this local alignment? Local alignment is done by the same dynamic programming approach as the global alignment with two modifications. First, for local alignment, the scoring system includes negative scores for mismatches. Second, unlike global alignment, this program does not run from end to end. During alignment scoring, when a dynamic programming scoring value becomes negative, that value is set to zero and the dynamic programming stops the alignment up to that point. Although a computer program that is based on the Smith-Waterman local alignment algorithm is used for producing an optimal alignment, but remember that this feature does not assure that a local alignment will always be produced. The scoring metrics, match and mismatch scores, and the gap penalties that are chosen to perform the alignment also influence whether or not a local alignment will be obtained. Similarly, a program based on the needleman Unshu algorithm can also return a local alignment depending on the weighting of end gaps and on other scoring parameters. Okay. Let us perform local and global alignments between two sequences. Our first protein is flabo hemoprotein of Escherichia coli. Our second sequence is human hemoglobin subunit alpha. To perform the alignments, we use the online versions of MBOSS provided in the European Bioinformatics Institute website. See that for pairwise global alignment of protein sequences, program needle is available. For pairwise local alignment, program water is available. The procedure is simple. Just copy and paste your sequences in the two boxes. Select your substitution matrix file. Select your gap opening and gap extension penalties and hit the submit button. We must do this for both of the online programs. The results are right in front of you. You can clearly see the local and the global alignments. You can see the gaps. You can see the match and the mismatches. All that remains is to understand the molecular basis of these results, which we shall address in our future video lectures.